Hey, uh, good afternoon, uh, the yard. Uh, yeah, hey, look, we got the hair and beard done today. Uh, hadn't done a video in a while. Um, just did another scenario, which, again, I hope I'm not below you guys, but as the players get more and more, and I, I have access to the, the draft network, so I do them often to get another prospects. And the one I just put up, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing this video is I'm stoked about it. That would be the one I'd be all over. Um, Right now, um, looking at the players and, and the things, as everybody knows, Big Ben's going to be going away too. Um, Steelers are 17 or 18, I believe, is when they're going to be projected to pick. Um, I can see Kenny Pickett being a player. Uh, I want someone they would like. Um, maybe Matt Corral. I don't see – I read all the rumors about, you know, big free agency, you know, Matt Ryan trades. That's just – I'm back to what you boy, the boys said a long time ago. That's not really their culture. Uh, Kenny Pickett does fit what they like to do. Uh, hand the ball off, tough guy, local kid. So for me, I use that scenario, and that's probably I, – I, I just keep thinking that's going to be happening because we need players as well. You know, I think, first of all, when we do these mocks or scenarios or talk about players, I think we're all in a, unlike the rest of the board. Yeah, do we have a chance to become, from I'm going to quote you, Lethal, um, <laughs> mediocre, becoming kind of a, a good team or okay team, but it's going to take a draft too. I mean – yeah, I think uh, Clarence, you said it best. Yeah, with a little luck and a good draft and some free agent signings, sure, we might get in. But truth is, this is a reset, rebuild. Um, so I'm going to kind of discuss the philosophy. Of I didn't put free agents this time because we just keep doing the same ones. And I'm, I'm going to put it out here. I think we'll make a splash of sorts. Uh, I keep, for some reason, I think safety. I could be wrong. I can't ignore the the, the connection that, uh, TF has with Marcus Williams and the Saints could be in cap trouble. That would be a lovely, lovely, lovely one. And if you look at, I think it was, I can't remember his name, I don't know, Denver, where they signed him to the contract, they were able to do it team friendly. But, um, so I think he could actually do that type of sign. Um, that would be a big one. I, I don't see this being big on the edge game. It may be um, a Charles Harris, I think, could put Clarence possible, somebody like that. I think uh, a nose tackle might be on the corner. Like uh, Brandon Williams will be free, most likely. Uh, Daquan Jones, who has a history with bees, you know, down in Carolina. Some guy like that. Akeem Hicks, I think Falcons are seven. But and I, I don't know how we're, I just don't see us going out and doing a big John Edge contract. One, most of them aren't worth it. And two, they're so expensive. Um, so I think Edge would get addressed. But again, and I keep repeating myself, I think you can look at pass rush multiple plays. So we want to be linebacker. You know, having linebackers in the middle that are not, you know, they can do 4-3 or 3-4, but able to blitz one thing, that fits a piece deal. So in this mock, kind of the highlights of it, you know, we trade down. I, I keep going back Jameson Williams or Traylon Burks. I just, wide receiver right now with the Ridley news as we're starting to see break, and I believe there's truth to it. And, J.D., you want to hear your opinion too? I, I don't think we have enough wide receiver to fill a fucking roster. Yes, um, you know, Smith does operate, obviously, with the 11, 12 personnel, but you need wide receivers. So I could see us trading down Jameson Williams or Williams come to mind or Traylon Burks. They both kind of fit what I can see doing. Um I hate direct common, but Corey Davis, uh, if you look at size-wise, Jameson's probably around the same size. I think Jameson's faster. Uh, Traylon Burks is obviously like A.J. Brown. And then when you go into the second round, um, that's where I think you start getting unique. I think a guy like Drake Jackson, um, not my favorite edge in the whole draft, definitely not Hutchison, but Drake Jackson, if you're going to get a cop, is a very Harold Landry-type player. Um he could make an impact um, in the right spot. Uh, so I think you can get an edge. Um, you, you'll notice I got lucky in my simulator, and I got Brandon Smith was slipping. It, that kind of wonder, because Brandon Smith's going to have this insane combine probably, but he is raw. But, again, putting a guy like Brandon Smith, who can come off the edge, it's not a bad thing. And also, you know, outside linebacker. I think we'll probably retain Foy if we can. Hopefully, we shed that Devo contract. Uh, another highlight is I, I picked two tight ends. I still keep going back tight ends. I think two tight ends are a possibility. One, it's a great fucking tight end uh, draft. Two, I don't believe all your receiving targets have to be. I heard a lot of chatter, and I get it. Don't agree. You know, I agree and don't agree. Pitts is not just a tight end. I think we knew that going. He's as much a Megatron as he is a guy that can go in line. So, as far as I'm concerned, Pitts is your number one wide receiver. 
you know, get a Jameson, go over the top. You add another threat. Trey McBride's the one I'd, I'd go with for Jalen Widermeyer. Both those guys are going on. Another pick, a tight end. I keep going to Jalil Bill. Like, I think Jalil Bill is like fits perfectly what Smith likes to do with those moves, you guys, like Johnny Smith in the past, Delaney Walker. Uh, another guy could be an option would be Cole Turner in the bottom. There are a lot of good tight ends in this draft. Uh, one noticeable addition to this, and it's one of my draft crushes, which is Leo, Leo Chanel. Dude, that linebacker, he's 6'2", 250. He looks like a throwback. He's just an old-school AFSC, come downhill, smack in the fucking face. And it's a linebacker. He, you know, he's like James Harrison, if I was going to compare him, right? This brutal guy. He's not the best in pass coverage, but if you got athletic guys around him, you can certainly survive. Um, another one, John Ridgway. You see, I put him all again. John Ridgway, I, I highly recommend look that prospect up. 6'6", six 320. Six, Transfer to Illinois State. He's just kind of that gnarly, big old country strong white boy defensive end, nose tackle, whatever you want, interior D line, lunch pal guy. He's kind of like that guy out of Stanford that's doing well for the Bills. I forgot his name. Uh, name escapes me, but he guys I'm talking about plays for Buffalo now. Just that big, solid, mean kind of ugly guy. And then Brees Hall was one that fell. So that was a big highlight. Brees Hall, to me, is still one of the best running backs in the right system. I don't think Brees is going to run an exceptional 40. So he could actually drop. Uh, trade downs, which we did. I did a trade down. We actually did another trade down, you'll see, to bring all this together with the Eagles because Carson Strong was sitting on the fence. But I, I could doubt see somebody like the Eagles taking a gander on somebody like a, a Carson Strong. Um... And probably my favorite pick ended up with Zion Johnson. Um, Zion's interesting. I don't know where he's going to go. Zion is a first round talent, but he's he's six foot two, six foot three ish, three twenty. So he doesn't fit the bill of any sort of tackle. He's been playing inside left guard. He's a natural left guard. Um, it just really depends how the board falls. Um, I think we're going to see a run of wide receivers. I think we'll see some early cornerbacks, the ones there's not a ton of cornerbacks in here. I'm not overly fond of the safeties, they're okay. I think the edges are gonna quick. Get a guy like Zion Johnson sitting there in your second round pick, it'd be really hard. He's a clear upgrade. And and back to upgrade, we talk it all the time. Look, drafting best player available at this time, you know, obviously you don't want to go out and double dip at everything, but it makes sense. Is Zion, does that negate Jalen Mayfield's role? No, you need multiple depth. Uh, does that negate Dahlman or, you know, any's role? No. So I think an old lineman possible. If you got a guy like Zion Johnson, I think you almost pencil him day one. Uh, one other one, I think I put another one of these snares. was like Daniel Fahala. I can't remember. Big right tackle prospect. Maybe you want to get ahead of the curve and, you know, Caleb and you want to move on from him. Um, Overall, that's the type of draft I would do. Um, you know, I guess you could go multiple. I'd like to see all you guys do mocks and scenarios and see your thing. Um, you're going to see a lot of the same players as we firm out. Um, good thing, I think, on this class that I like is one that's deep in some areas. And I think a lot of these guys play to their times. I think the combines would just simply justify the positions we think. Um, Brees Hall, for example is a one-cut guy. He may run more like a four or six-ish. Um, four sixes or something like that. But watch his game speed. You know, um, his game speed is is, is, is four, five, four, six. Um, to me, it's a good year for what we need. Um, Edge, yes, I'm going to say this. If you're at 10, to take this to wrap it up, I would certainly go... Uh, give me a second. Sorry, guys. My damn phone. Um, but Edge, to me, unless you get a Karloftis or somebody that falls to you, I don't... I just don't see you reaching for it. Um, Jackson, who I picked second, could, could, could obviously go bottom the first. Kingsley and Ongbar is there. Um, there's other guys... Um, but it's just it's going to be one of those things. I mean, we obviously need pass rushers, but I, I you know, I think me personally looking at the draft, unless you get the Hutch or the Karloftis or the, 
you know, or Thibodeau. And, and you know, who knows? They could they could fall, right? Um, I think you got to look creatively. But let me also throw out here too. Like if you look at the, and I brought this up before, but if you look in the middle of your lineup, if you legitimately beef up and get more pass rush ability and more physicality in your linebacker core, and I, when I'm saying linebacker, I'm gonna go like Cog front agnostic, right? You have know, guys that are more rugged inside so linebacker. I think Vell said it best. You can't have a Debo and a fucking Foy and be your primary guys. Don't forget Michael Walker's that pass rush ability. There are ways to get pass rush. So to me, if you augment that with the civil draft isn't these linebacker off-ball guys that can also do rush off the edge and provide, you know, thing in, I think you're good. Um, I'm not going to lie, my favorite prospect in the whole damn draft, you know, look, I can figure out a way to get Jamison Williams, come back up and get him and get to Kobe Dean. I'd be even happier, but that's kind of my one. Uh, we'll do another one later. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Um, any videos, welcome to. Um, as we get into it, look, we always talk BPA versus need. Obviously, they bounce each other, but I think when you look at the roster and as we look through what the draft is, it's kind of aligning very nicely. So, to me, uh, it, it might make sense to, to to at least to the strength of the draft. And the strength of the draft to me is linebackers. The strength of the draft is tight ends. I think the running backs are okay. Um, I think – Sorry, guys. My, my phone's still going. Um, but anyway, I'm on. Yes, Lethal. My damn phone never go, always goes off because I actually have another job. Um, just so you guys know, look. I got the work computer over here. Yeah, you know, look. Just so you guys know, look. I'm all dressed up because I had a picture. I got a work iPad. So, yes, JD. Despite me having plenty of time, you know, to do uh, scenarios and shit, they're kind of like in my break time before I go to another meeting. But the point of the thing is, I think the draft lines up well. And I think on a free agent, to kind of recap this, if I were a free agent, um, I don't know how you don't go wide receiver of some sort. We've already beat that death. Cedric Wilson, somebody like that, maybe. Maybe Christian Kirk, Isaiah McKenzie. I think there's some decent interior line guys you could get one year, two year drill, sort of. Um, Safety to me, if we enter the fray, I mean, Marcus May is one. Uh, Bates, if he gets away from Cincinnati, but I don't know that he would. Um, Xavier Woods, I like a lot. I think over up in, um, I think that he's a, I like him a lot. I think he would be a good one. You know, he's kind of a, a guy coming along. Marcus Williams is a ball hawk. I think safety to me, if I were going to put my resources, it'd be go out and get the back end solidified. Um, we know from Pease in his past, he likes to have a lot of safeties. And, of course, we have Harmon and, you know, Harris is older, the one-year deals. Jalen Hawkins is a fantastic third safety turn into. He can move around and drop down a box. And, and I just think, you know, Richie Grant, I think, has a role. I don't think he's a wasted draft pick, but I, th I could just see safety being a big deal. Um, uh, but to me, the draft is, yeah, linebackers and, and tight ends and uh, running back. I mean, it, you know. Again, I don't think um, I don't know if Brees Hall's better than Walker. Walker's a unique animal. Charbonnet is still probably my one A, one B kind of him and Walker. But I mean, Brees Hall's a great one too. So that's my little humble attempt. I hope you guys enjoy the video and the scenarios. There'll be more to follow. And again, I'm trying not not trying to bombard you. Please, please, please don't assume these are mocks. They're not. They're for the same for mock. I can't really tell where everybody's going. I simply use a simulator, and I'm trying to get you exposed to more, um, more, more prospects. If I haven't done a lot of work, and please uh, shower me, uh, Francis, Jed, you do a great job of putting prospects I've never heard. Um, so I tell you what, I'll end with this. What's your thoughts on Leo Chenault of a linebacker core that added Landry? I'm sorry, Landry. Sorry, <laughs> Drake Jackson says so outside linebacker edge. Uh, Leo Chanel inside linebacker, mobile front, and Brandon Smith. Would you like it? Yes or no? Y'all have a good one. Bye.